All right, we'll see if this works. I'm going to probably be jumping around all over the, well, at least on the main floor. I don't know how I, any other way to do it, and I'm going to have to jump up on a stool and so on and so forth. I think I've mentioned before that other than any other conflict zone in the, in the Great War, I'm going to be abstracting a ton of things pr except this one. This one really intrigues the living Dickens out of me. So this is what I'm calling the Arabian conflict zone. So it's essentially Palestine and uh, Mesopotamia. And did I include the Caucasus? I don't think so. No. Um, excuse me. But it's part of it because I'm because of the non-aggression pact that I got the Ottomans to sign with the Russians and it's massive uh, and it's got a lot of repercussions later on especially I just found out this morning I was like oh my god I didn't uh, glad I was looking it up you'll find out in a sec well here let's get on the stool this has been a ton of fun to do so the Russian troops are done so those are their locations I'm sorry it's just they're very small uh, counters. Um, I went the other way around with this because I was like I'm not going to start doing uh, going all over the place. So that's basically it. I dismantled uh, so most of the Caucasian army that was there is on its way out. Those that blue thing is Elizabethopol and that's basically the transit point to and from onto the strategic map. Uh, to get troops on there, and that's more or less the normal way. If you can, unless you want to start getting into the sea uh, movement, uh, merchant shipping, naval transport, which I'm going to be doing. Trust me. Uh, those uh, depots I found out are essentially just stationary headquarters. They do everything except the they can't move. They do everything a headquarters can do. Uh, so the Russian troops are yeah, I've essentially um, they're stripped down to the bare minimum. That being said, when you start taking a look at the geography, it's going to take an awfully long time to move uh, the amount of troops over, and I'll show you in a minute. Um, okay, so I haven't written it down, but I'll tell you basically the gist of the non-aggression pact with the Ottomans and the Russians are no troops are allowed adjacent to the border, so you can see that there. Also, no army headquarters or artillery are allowed south of cars for the Russians and on the flip side for the Ottomans uh, north of Erzurum. So what I did actually on a side note, well, I might as well finish the, uh, the uh, non-aggression pact. Uh, what else? Uh, there's free transport of uh, in the Black Sea, uh, transport through the Bosphorus and Dardanelles of non-military vessels. This is important for the Russians later because they're, that means they're allowed to transport uh, things such as coal, special metals, whatever, to the other Entente powers, which is kind of creepy weird if you think about it, because in a sense they could be actually, the with this non-aggression pact, the Ottomans are kind of allowing the Russians to fuel the Brits, probably to nail them in uh, sorry, now I'm going down here, but I haven't done any of this stuff. But uh, yeah, for this offensive, that uh, that's going to be coming uh, trucking along at one point. Look, yeah, and the Ottomans, I've got a ton of troops uh, coming as well. Um, that being said, the logistics, the terrain, the geography, the climate, you name it, for this area is horrendous. Uh, a lot of the trans, uh, transport is going to have to be done via um, rivers. There's line of communications issues. Uh, you can see here the railheads uh, that are still under construction. So all those dotted, uh, the single track areas that don't where are not with a railhead, uh, they don't exist yet. This one down here is the one I'm going to be focusing on. As far as I know, so there's going to be a lot of troops, but it, it doesn't mean I can have them anywhere uh, where I want them. Uh, so I think I'm doing pretty good. I'm uh, cutting, my, like I said, again, shaving. I'm always looking for time uh, shaving. The way I looked at it here, I'm getting away from the uh, floodplains and whatnot. I'm using the 11th core as potentially a, um, a spot, uh, a redistribution spot to bring in troops and whatnot and supply and use the river. Of course, the Brits just dawned on me last week. I was like, wait a minute. It, uh, the river runs downstream towards the ocean, so they're actually in a better, they get to use the river better than the 
um, than the home side kind of thing if you want to call it that. Those red, those unidentified uh, red uh, Ottoman things are just to basically tell both sides there are Ottoman troops there. Um, and what I'm not, I'm straying from historically is this is mid to late November in our timeline, my timeline, and Kerna has already just been taken by the Brits. That doesn't get taken until December as far as I know, but I'm just going with it. Um, and then come January, we'll deal with it. Uh, it's also good for the Brits because they're not sticking their neck out going towards uh, uh, towards Kut, and uh, uh, that doesn't happen for a while still. But I mean, it's you know, it's going to cause some grief later on. I'm using this bit just to remind myself this little white until I do a proper counter. That uh, the Indian troops uh, were. This is it. This was their jurisdiction primarily. Unfortunately, of course, it's just the day and age. Um, you know, it was uh, Brits that basically were, you know, were in charge of everything. But it was the, this is the Indian uh, Indian troops as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, so that's that. Uh, this was a side note I just found out because I'm starting to get into naval transport. Like I said, this could maybe a god-awful video, but we'll see. I don't know if you can see that, but it's uh, Mother Russia here. Oh, here, what am I doing? I'm look not looking at the right thing. There we go. And it's about monster monster things that are going to occur in a bit and we're going to get to it you can say hello to leo hello puss puss there you go is here this map i just found out that come january well because i'm that's why i'm incorporating the grand campaign the russians are going to have to keep essentially 50 strength points all the time down here in galicia and about 100 up up towards here there's also this um uh, area basically anywhere if the Germans get uh, it's a long ways away it's like near Vilna but if the Germans ever get towards there um, all, any one of these three things under 50 under 100 or Germans east of that area and um, bad things happen I think uh, over here they immediately surrender and all this stuff it's yeah, it's not good oh. anyways yeah like I said I'm just gonna be a bit of a slight ramble here Okay, I'm going to show you the note. Um, hold on here. Like I said, I'm going nice and whatever. I'm trying to. Um, is this bit. I found this online. It's, um, are your objectives smart? And I thought, hey man, I'm going to use this when I start looking at core commanders and, and doing objectives and offensives and so on and so forth. I was like, yeah, this is cool. And when I looked at that, um, let me go towards the 13th core. This is the next guy I'm doing over here. I'll go get my crazy forceps. I guess that's perhaps the uh, thing to do. I'm sorry, I'm using my camcorder and I'm not really staring at what I should be staring at, which is the screen. So here uh, is the 13th core. Uh, this poor uh, guy has been uh, told to take here and here. He's going to have to attack across woods and in, um, uh, I'm sorry, across the river and in woods. Um, he's got barely any strength points. He's got uh, another four coming in here from Wooj. But he's got nobody in three turns, so I'm looking at that smart objective thing, and he's probably going to say, no, I'm not going to do what you want me to do. That's essentially it. Uh, I did do some combat, uh, uh, and something nice uh, for once happened for the Germans, I guess you could say. Um, so here's the uh, 12th Corps. Uh, Scheffel Boyardel, or Boyer, something like that. Um, he... Um, had barely anybody, just basically two landwehr brigades and a cavalry division. Um, but we got to get going. He's been tasked to take that hex, that hex, that hex, and that hex. He was able to take this because the Russians just withdrew. It was super easy. Uh, brought in four divisions. So he went from two brigades to uh, just a ridiculous amount. I redistributed, I reassigned. Uh, that landwehr brigade that he had uh, to the third, uh, to the eleventh corps. So I'm sure these guys are happy because they were not part of the combats anymore. And there's there's a landwehr landwehr sorry landwehr brigade. Yep, they were over here. Landwehr brigade because um, they uh, they advanced into it. That's why I said there's been a good thing that happened for the Germans. Remember what I said though about I'm trying to uh, maybe I should just pop that on as a separate video so you can see it's not a great uh, whatever but you can see all the combat and what happened but essentially what I'm trying to do is yet again uh, the Germans are not going to do anything until they're guaranteed two hits we went across the um, 
Uh, the clear terrain here, there was no di a die roll modifier, so we brought in four uh, divisions that were coming in for the reinforcements, the 47th, 48th Reserve Divisions, and the 3rd and 4th uh, Infantry Divisions uh, from the Western Front. That popped me up to 28 strength points. Uh, the 12th Corps, because... Oh, shit, i got to remove two strength point, uh, supply points. Uh, because they're a core, I was you know, only able to supply uh, two strength... Uh, two supply points for the attack, that's eight strength points. The remainder, I get chopped in half. Um, so that brought me down to 18 attacking strength points, which is just the number you need. Uh, max, max to, uh, there's a 0% chance that I can't inflict two hits. or 50% chance that I'll do more than two hits. And they did, they did three hits, which is exactly what they needed. Because the Russians over here had uh, nine strength points. They were doing their little trick of making, ensuring that you have to do uh, some stuff. Since their supplying he uh, he uh, headquarters was this guy, the second corps, I retreated them back towards their supply, whatever. Oof, that was a lot of supply, a lot of troops to do it, but that's the way it goes, and we're just going to keep on trucking and see if it go, uh, see if it works. So 13th corps over here is not going to do much. Now we're going to go, um, I'll try to go nicely, and we're going to start talking about, like I said, uh, about the Russian troops and the difficulties and what I'm um, having some fun. So this is the Caucasian, uh, these, from the Caucasian uh, army, these are the troops that are going to be, uh, uh, this is all the stuff that's going to be, uh, have to be brought over and into the um, Eastern conflict zone. All right, so I'm going to go to this big giant map over here to just show you how far away. So that's Batum, that's Odessa, and there's all the conflict that's going on. So Cernowitz is over here somewhere, uh, over there. Sorry, I'm not looking at the screen again. Anyways, on this strategic map, you're going to see it in a minute. There's Rostov. This guy has to rail troops all the way over to here. So you can see that's a flipping nightmare. It takes a long time. I'm still going to be doing it. And now let's get on to the, we'll go to the strategic map, and then we're going to go into this shrunken down map of everything that I've got here. So I'm trying to do the best. So, you can see how, for example, here's Elizabethopol. And you got to use these to get all the way to Rostov. And then, like, you still got a long, long way to go. But you can see where Batum is over here. And there's Odessa. And uh, port 3 capacity to a port 4 capacity, it's pretty darn good. But you can see there's no ray. I have to still f take a look at how movement along strategic uh, mapped is it only along the rail lines and so on and so forth can I go across these hexes? I don't know uh, Well, uh, that maybe that's not what it's used for find out But because when we go into this I was like screw this I'm going like I said I'm going to try to shave off and I'm going to do everything I can to, to help out here so, so and anyways there's Odessa, port four. I can get troops using this rail line. Remember, it, it doesn't, it's not represented on the strategic map to Cernowitz in one turn. Using this with uh, four moving points. If they start even with the entrain, even in training, and away you go. And this is the maximum they can get if, the, if you didn't go towards Cernowitz. Sorry, I wasn't looking uh, towards Proskorov. So that's uh, all that stuff that's going on in my little, uh, trickling on in my little head this way. This is all going to get incorporated later on, but it's just been a freaking black hole and a half just sucking my um, my attention in because it's just so much fun. Come on, let's... Jeepers jumping. So let's go back to this beautiful little... Probably the most... Oh, did I show you? Did I... I don't know if I did. Did I show you... Um, Blinky Bob. Blinky Bob. From Dad vs. Son sent me sent this over to me. I'm not sure if I did. Um, anyways, that's Blinky Bob. And at first, when I saw Blinky Bob and popped him on the war table here, I was like, "Boy, Blinky Bob's a bit big for it." And I'm like, "No, you're not. He's actually doing exactly what uh, he needs to be doing." And that's reminding me that this is an important part come uh, January 1915, so that I have to deal with um, that whole se that whole section. Woo wee! This is fun. But this, like I said, holy Lord Lifton, this has been hard as hell to stay away from. 
Oh, it's just like... Okay, that's it. I think I better uh, call it a whatever. Yeah, pop that in. I love that thing too. See ya.